to A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast. And look, I know many of you around the world are quite jealous of the fact that we're still in the midst of summer here and it's beautiful, steamy and be perfect beach weather. I know I was just speaking to our producer before the show and he said, yes, rub it in. So I suppose in a couple of months' time when we're freezing our little tushies off, you'll all be sort of saying, oh, well, it's lovely here and it's a perfect summer's day. So this takes us to the beginning of the show and this week we're going to have a very, very big show because it's it's one of those times in history where we're all going to experience history in the making. So this week, for those of you that have been under a rock and haven't been following any news stories, any social media, or really don't know what's happening in the world except this show or some of the shows that are on this network, let me inform you, we are in for a history-making event as far as concerning the moon. Now, for those of you that watch the show regularly, you know I always talk about twice a month, I talk about the full moon and then the new moon, and we talk about astrology throughout the show, and we'll still do that today, but I'm going to start the show off with try and demystify what this moon event is about. I've had so many messages, so many phone calls, and everybody's sort of saying to me, look, they don't quite understand it. Everybody's giving them conflicting, different information. Look, I'm not saying what I'm saying is 100% accurate, but this is to the best of my knowledge and my research and the best of my understanding of over 30 years in astrology. This is what my take on it is. It is known as a blood blue full moon lunar eclipse and it will be in Leo. So what that means in basic layman's terms is number one, let's start with the blue moon. A blue moon is when we have two full moons in one calendar month. So we're having that this month, we're having two full moons in one calendar month. So we actually technically won't get a full moon in the month of February. So we're that close to February, I suppose, in a sense, you can say to me it doesn't really matter, but it is still technically happening before the end of this calendar month of January. Now, what does a blood moon mean? It means that the moon is very powerful, it's in the sky, it's a little bit closer to Earth, and when it takes on what's known as a pinky reddy colour, this is why it gets the name a blood moon. So why is this blue blood moon so important? It's the first time in 150 years that we have seen it at the same time as an eclipse. So eclipses are usually powerful in denoting that there's massive changes on the way. Sometimes we see them in weather events. Sometimes we see them in changes of governments around the world, revolts, things that go down in history. And sometimes it's our history in our own personal lives that we can say, gee, that happened around an eclipse. We have a few eclipses every year, but not usually coinciding with such a powerful event as this. Now, the fact that it's in Leo really sort of adds to the drama, I suppose, the excitement, the world stage, because anything Leo is likes to be bigger, better, drama, where's my stage, let me perform, let me show you how it's done, I need to do it in a proud and dramatic way. So having said that, we're going to find um, the eclipse is here in Australia at 11 o'clock tonight, daylight saving time, and then different in here in Queensland where I am, it's closer to midnight. But there's lots of too many locations for me to talk about around the world. So check your local um, area for when the eclipse is about to take place for you. It is a one that we can watch. We don't need to be sort of having special glasses or anything like that. For those of you that don't understand what to do about this, I mean, look, the usual rules of a full moon apply. If you're one of those people that likes to put your crystals out under the full moon, well, then be my guest. If you like to set your intentions that you want to bring in for the next month, that's perfect. If you want to release things, that's even better still. I always look at full moons as a time of release and, and letting go of things that we no longer want. So this is a very powerful time. I know it's a time when some people are struggling with family events around the world and you've got a lot of pent-up anger or frustration or, you know, maybe somebody's sick in hospital and the family aren't getting on it, deciding on what the treatment should be. This is the perfect time to write it down on a piece of paper or go somewhere that you feel safe at the time of the full moon and rant, rave, scream, jump up and down, do whatever you need to do to release it and send it out to the universe so that it's not actually staying in your body, creating havoc for your body in the future. So it is a mighty powerful sort of moon. So obviously that brings me to the candle of the week. And this week we are going to talk about it being the full moon candle. So what I will be doing with the full moon um, from later this afternoon, I will write down what it is that I would like to release, that I would like to let go of. 
things that maybe I no longer serve me in my life. I'll put them on a piece of paper. I'll read it out aloud. I'll light it and I'll place it underneath my candle and then I'll put my candle on something safe so that there's always a barrier between me and the table or the piece of furniture that I put it on. I'll leave it burning only for an hour to two hours. Some people say up to four hours. I feel four hours is a little bit too lengthy when you want to get on with your day. I mean, an hour or two, you can be working on the computer and have it next to you and keep an eye on it. When you start talking four hours, it all just becomes a little bit too difficult. So I only light my full moon candle over the duration of the full moon, which is two and a half days. I then pop it back on the shelf and I get it out again next month. So if you don't have a specific full moon candle, any candle will do, but make sure that you keep it just purely for that event. Don't use it as one I'm going to use next week to sort of try and attract more money into my bank account or something like that. We want to keep this energy pure and we want to keep it intensified in, and charged in some sort of way that it's our full moon candle. So the full moon is always a time when a lot of people say to me, I can't sleep, I feel restless, I get very angry, I get titchy, don't talk to me, I get fluid retention, I get lots of different things. That will vary on depending on the energy that the full moon's in. And because this month it's in Leo, and it's the, the full moon is always in the opposite sign to where the sun is astrologically. So the sun astrologically at the moment is in Aquarius. So that will demote, denote we will have a full moon in Leo. That's the way it works. And then the new moon in two weeks' time will also be in Aquarius. So that's just a little bit of a history lesson of how that happens. So we will actually have another blue moon later in the year. I think if my memory serves me correctly, August or September is our next one. We don't always have a blue moon every year. So that in itself is a significant event. So we're now going to go backtrack a little bit and we're going to work with our candle of the week, which is usually how I start the show. But this week I thought we'd talk about the moon because I've had so many requests about it. This week the, can the card of the week from the Simply Tarot deck is actually the card called the Judgment card. Now, this is a very misunderstood major arcana card. People think, well, what does judgment mean? Is it a religious card? Does it have religious connotations? Am I heading towards the pearly gates? Well, no, I don't believe it. it's any of those types of answers. I believe it's a card of decisions, big decisions, decisions that have been weighing down on us. So I'll read the initial interpretation and then we'll elaborate a little bit further. So the meaning on the bottom of the card is decisions pending finality, the only decision that can be made under the circumstances. Now, what I mean by that is it's a decision that you've dosed backwards and forwards, upside down, looked at it this way and that way, and then you sort of bring down like your final decision, like you're a high court judge, and you say, okay, this is my answer, this is my findings, this is the only decision I can make under the circumstances. It may not be perfect, it may not even be ideal, but it's the only one that I am comfortable with. So it's like you sort of deliberating and bringing down your own decision on your own life or what the situation may be after a lot of deliberation, a lot of angst, a lot of things that have been going through your mind before you come to that. So if you've got a decision to make and you're in that position, hopefully do it today before the full moon kicks in, this major powerful event, the triple event of the moon, because I would really suggest with such a powerful moon that you can, if you can avoid making any serious life-changing decisions, leave it for two to three weeks because your emotions and energies and everything are going to be scattered and all over the place with this very powerful event. Sometimes we can't avoid that. Sometimes we have to make those decisions regardless. So we're moving on to our new four-part series. And I thought because we're heading into the love season and it's not very far away from Valentine's Day, I thought we'd do a little four-part special on love in the zodiac signs. Okay, so what does love mean? Love means many things to many different people. But when most of us, when we think of love, we think of hearts, we think of flowers, we think of a warm, fuzzy feeling in our tummy. We think about being in a relationship, being with someone special, someone that makes us smile, somebody that makes us reach our full potential, somebody that we can be ourselves with, somebody we can just be out, just us. That, you know, that we don't have to pretend. We don't have to be something that we're not. We can just let it all hang out and they love us anyway. That's what love is to most people. So when you're in a relationship with an Aries, what does love mean to Aries? Well, love with, with an Aries person is exciting, definite, 
it's full of thrills and adventures and things like that. Sometimes the Aryan can seem a little bit me first. They can seem a little bit selfish, but it's certainly going to be an action-packed, fast, furious type of romance. And sometimes you'll be left shaking your head thinking, I wish you'd just slow down just slightly. So then when we move on to falling in love with a Taurian, well, this is a much more romantic love. This is a much more calm, sedate thoughtful sort of love where we slow things right down they enjoy good food good wine they love luxurious living they like a nice comfy sofa they like to go out to the best restaurants things like that they don't necessarily like parting with the money but they certainly do like romance and and the idea of being in love is very important to a Taurus it makes them feel much much more secure even though they may not necessarily want to share their love with anyone else, they can get very jealous and possessive, but they do find that they need to be in relationships or are more comfortable when they're in a relationship. So that's an important thing to remember. But steady and slow is how the Torian goes, even in love. So then we move on to the third sign that we're going to look at this week, which is the sign of Gemini. Now, to be in love with a Gemini, you've really got to have your, your skates on because Geminis flip from one situation to another. They're constantly sort of searching for something new, different, exciting to do, different people to talk to. They've got different ideas coming and going and even probably different boundaries and rules of what a relationship is and, and are we in a relationship, are we in a friendship, are we friends with benefits. You never really quite know with a Gemini what the definition of the word relationship is or love is this week or even this hour, but it does make for an exciting and interesting relationship, particularly if you don't want to be bored with somebody that's very predictable and the same will then pick a Gemini. So as we are heading towards Valentine's Day, I won't be discussing it on the show, the, the perfect gift solutions for buying a present for your Valentine by your Zodiac sign. But what I will do is pop up on my Facebook page, Amanda Hall Psychic, a little two-part series, and I'll put the first six signs up this week and the next six signs up next week on some gift-giving ideas for your Valentine's Day. So that was just something that I thought would be nice to do so that you've got some ideas of what you might buy your Valentine for Valentine's Day. So we're going to take our first call and it's Melissa in Charlotte, North Carolina. Are you there, Melissa? I'm here. How are you? Very well, thank you. So, Melissa, how can I help you, sweetie? Hi, um, I just had a question for you. Um, my husband and I have been trying to conceive for the past four years and we've been having a lot of difficulty. And I was just wondering if you saw anything in our future or any kind of positive signs Okay, look, I'm sorry that you're having trouble conceiving a baby. I mean, that's a can be a fairly common problem, interestingly enough. I mean, some people don't have any trouble. They just decide they're having a baby and the next thing you know, they're expecting a family. And then other couples struggle with this issue. And, and look, it's a complex issue. There's many, many reasons why things you don't conceive or what's blocking it. Is it an emotional thing? Is it a physical thing? I mean, if you've done all the usual checks and been to the medical practitioners and done all the usual checks and balances and they say everything's perfectly fine and there's no reason why you shouldn't be conceiving, then we need to look at an emotional reason. And sometimes it's not just something that we're consciously blocking, Melissa. Sometimes it goes way, way back in our soul's journey. And people used to look at me strangely when I started talking about this about 30-odd years ago, that how could something that's happened in a past life affect this lifetime, and particularly something like conceiving a child? Well, I'm a firm believer in reincarnation, and I'm a firm believer in we've all got lessons to do and things that we came here to learn. That's how we grow and, and become a stronger soul, an older soul, whatever label you want to put on it. And sometimes we bring in with us in this incarnation some of the baggage or some of the unresolved emotional issues that we maybe didn't sort out or didn't come to terms with in previous the previous life or previous lifetimes. And sometimes that's the blockage that prevents us from conceiving. Now, with you and your husband, when I sort of tap into the energy of the two of you of a couple, there is absolutely no logical reason to me why you haven't conceived yet. You know, you have a very solid relationship. You really respect each other. You know, everything's in its rightful place. There's no reason why it shouldn't have happened. 
other than I think that sort of maybe somewhere back in the soul's journey together, and I think you've been together in three other lifetimes other than this one, I feel that there was a blockage there because there was one particular lifetime where the two of you were, dare I say, more obsessed with finances and getting ahead and being a power couple or, you know, building a really big empire, that family and having a family wasn't important. Now, for whatever reason, the next lifetime after that, the two of you went the opposite way and tried to have a really big family and it didn't work. So what you've done is you've brought in that, that energy of that disappointment. So I think what we've got to try and do now is try and sit down and meditate and meditation can be mean different things for different people. Some people find it very easy to sit there and switch their mind off and go into a place and get messages, and other people find it incredibly difficult. I suggest to people, if you're the one of the ones that finds it difficult, like I did for a long time, put on a favourite piece of music. Sing along to the words, but at the same time, tell your mind you're not going to think of anything else, you're just going to breathe and listen to the beat of the music, the, the words that you like, and just breathe and let it go. If you can do that a few times, then you'll start to find that you'll start to feel your energy changing. Now, in that energy change, you may get a couple of sentences. You may only get a word. You might get a really uncomfortable feeling. You might feel like you want to burst into tears. Whatever that is, I want you to go with it because what we'll be doing is tapping into that previous soul's energy and acknowledging it and being able to be then in a position to release it. I do actually feel that you and your husband will have children. I'm saying children, more than one, and I do feel that the first pregnancy will be before the end of this year. So I just sort of feel that we need to sort of be calm about all this, do what I've suggested, and just remember that you do deserve to be parents and there's nothing that you've done wrong. But also in this lifetime, was there in the early stages of your marriage where the two of you were trying to get, you know, finances in place because that was important to both of you before the family? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You know, what you've done is you've brought in that exaggerated energy from the past life that that was the most primary important thing in your life. Well, yes, it's important, but now what's more important is we feel we're ready to be parents. So, you know, the finances are in a comfortable spot now. Now we can focus on babies and futures and what we'd sort of like. So I think also, too, don't be too hard on yourselves and don't focus on just baby, baby, baby all the time. Start doing things for you too. Start thinking along the lines, well, when we've got children, we won't be able to go here for a trip. Or when we've got children, we won't be able to take that trip and go walking in the woods because we won't be able to take the pram. Things like that. And start putting that your mindset in that way. And that will also help change your mindset because you'll already be starting to think like parents and act like parents. So the body will respond in the same way. But I know you're going to be hearing good news before the end of the year, Melissa. Thank you so much. That is very comforting to know. Okay. My pleasure, sweetheart. Have a great time. And, and get, get a couple of trips under underway now so that before you won't have time to be having as many trips because you'll have a little family to contend with. Now, can I ask you one last question? Yeah, sure. Yeah where the pregnancy is going to, um, to medical, to like an IVF, or is it more no, of a I natural? Didn't feel it, no, I felt it was going to be natural. I felt you were sort of booked in for something like that, but before it became your turn, bingo, you were already in the family way. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Have a great night. We're going to go to Jennifer in St. Petersburg in Florida. Are you there, Jennifer? I am. Thank you. How can I help you tonight, sweetie? Um, yeah, I um, we have a big move coming up with our family, and um, I, I have a few avenues. Um, I've kind of been one of those um, a jack of many trades, but a master of none, and I mm -hmm. I tend to fluctuate and have multiple jobs going on. I'm very much um, independent, like entrepreneurial type, and. Um, mm -hmm. We're having a huge shift in our family, and I'm trying to figure out what avenue I should do. And I've never been able to stick to one thing for very long. I get bored, and I master things quickly, so I want to move on to something else. And I find myself wanting to focus more on just one thing for the first time in my life. 
and I'm not sure okay, which avenue to go. All right. The first things first is don't ever be critical of yourself because you, you d haven't necessarily wanted to become the master of one area. You've had the, the good fortune of that you're, you're quick and able to learn things very, very rapidly. You can absorb it, you can look at it, and then it's sort of like karmically, well, I've completed that next, and you move on to the next thing and the next thing. So it's interesting now that you're feeling that you want to just focus on one area. At the moment, is there three things on the go or three things that you could potentially sort of turn into the the one main area? Yeah, I have three different I have three different skills, I guess, um, that I make money at. And okay, they were showing me I, the I middle did. one. So whatever the middle one is, or the one that you started second out of these three, to me holds the answer, holds the key. Okay. So if we look at that one and then see how we can expand that out. But you don't always have to just be one person or one or focus on one thing, Jennifer. Sometimes people like you and I that aren't satisfied with things, you know, once you've climbed Everest, you're looking for the next Everest to climb. That's who you are. You'd become bored and become stale if you just focused on one area. Right. So it's okay to have exactly. two or three different things on the go. You know, yes, you'll have one primary source of income, but you have the other two that just sort of make you feel important, you know, that give you that spark, that gives you that enthusiasm to get out of bed. So I think that's important that you that, want. Yeah, I think that's how I've always been. I've always, mm. and, and it's funny because one will kind of rise up and be the primary source of income, and then I'll kind of get burned out, and then the other one just that ebb and flow. I've never been without income, and I've always, it's just mm. the universe has always been very gracious, and they kind of all just blend together very nicely. Um, it's just. Yeah, well, don't, don't I think, argue with that. Don't argue with yeah. that. That's the way that your life has been structured before you drew breath. You know, because okay. something, sort of, you know, say you've got three things on the go now and number two is the one that's going to take the lead for the time being. And then you get your fill of that and then you bounce back to number one becoming the primary thing and then number one fades back and number three takes over. You know what I mean? It's just you'll always right. intuitively know which way you need to go. You don't have to be just that one hat. You, you are much better at having two or three or four or six things on the go at once. That keeps your creative juices flowing. That keeps you exciting. It keeps you motivated. It stops you getting sick. You're a person that doesn't get sick very often. When you do it, it's for one of two reasons, either out of boredom or two, you're absolutely exhausted. It's never just because right. it's going out. So why try and change what your basic personality is? As long as you're making an income and you're happy, isn't that the main thing? No, absolutely. Yeah, and once you go with the flow of that instead of trying to fight it and push yourself into a box that you don't fit into, because then what you're going to do is limit your opportunities and limit the things that can come towards you. Some people are happy to just have a single career path that suffices for the whole of their lives. Then you see other people that are constantly changing, moving tweaking, doing whatever, and people think, oh, I couldn't live like that. Well, that's okay. Nobody's asking them to live like that. Where well, you couldn't be that person that got the job at the railway and stayed there for the next 50 years, you'd, you'd die of boredom. Oh, yeah, I can't. I've tried in the past, and I just, and it's funny, okay. I'm, I'm kind of known to be that person, and mm -hmm. I'll, 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 you know, and I have a lot of options. I feel very blessed that I have those options, and that I can very easily just jump into whichever one I need to jump into when I need to. And they've always been, I've always been very successful that way. And I thrive on that. Um, what I'm trying to figure out is because I am moving, we are physically moving our, our family to a different place is, um, and, and what's, what helps is that they're all independent. So I don't re need to rely on someone else, so to speak. Um mm -hmm. I just need to figure out where we're going to move in regard to, like, what house to choose. We have a lot of options, and it's kind of a little overwhelming because my, my husband is very meticulous, and he thinks very deeply in those things where I'm very spontaneous, and I just feel it out, and I find it, and I'm just like, that's it, you know? I think what you need to do is when you go house hunting, say you're, you're going to go and look at 10 houses today, as you pull up out the front, 
write down what your first thought is, what your first feeling is, how you feel in the pit of your stomach. Then go in and do the viewing. But you've already got okay. that immediate psychic reaction. You pulled up out the front, oh, God, I felt uncomfortable. I felt like I had a pain in my stomach. This is not good. But you go and you look at the house and then you can say, well, it's not right for these reasons. If you can do mm -hmm. that, then it might seem impulsive to someone else, but that's how you naturally work. And that will then be you'll never make a mistake. And the same with the, the work opportunities. I mean, it doesn't really matter which one of the three it is. I just felt the middle one was going to be the, the leader for the moment. The others will always, you know, go up and down on their levels as, as they need to anyway. But I feel your husband's sort of certainly the more cautious one. And he's more frightened of making a mistake where you've got to be the one to show him, lead by example and say, darling, when we pulled up here, this felt right. Then we got out, we looked at it, we made sure the price was right, the building was sound, it's going to suit the family, it's in a you know, good area, all the, the usual logical, practical things, but your instincts led you to this feels right or it feels wrong. Right, and he, and if, he tells you me, he right. says he wants to look at houses to pick up on my psychic, like what I feel. He's very, mm -hmm. he lets me do that and I, and I tell him like this is the one that feels right and you know, he's kind yeah, of that's learning. That's why I think you make it sort of a little bit more scientific by writing down what you felt as you pulled up out the front. Okay. okay or I'll put it that. on your phone. I'll just do a little voice recording out the front of number 22 Smith Street, and this is what I feel and think. And then okay. take it from there, and then go and do the logical things. I don't mean to be rude, Jennifer, but we're at the end of the show now, unfortunately. The time well, does go fine. very quickly. So I wish you very well on your move and I look forward to talking to you again in the future. So on next week's show, we'll have our second part series of Love Through the Signs. We'll be looking at Cancer, Leo and Virgo. We'll have our card of the week, our soy candle of the week, and we'll have a little trip around the universe to see what's happening and how you're fed with this moon event that's happening this week. So batten down the hatches, get your crystals ready, whatever your little regime is for the, the full moon, and enjoy it. And if you get a chance to look, if the weather's allowing you to do so in your part of the world will it'll be an event that we'll only see once in our lifetime so enjoy have a great week bye for now